we got Montel Jackson back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Brian Kelleher at UFC 232 on December 29th. Uh, Montel, what's going on, man? How are you? Pretty good, man. How you guys doing? I'm doing well, man. Does this feel like Groundhog Day a little bit, talking about a fight with Brian Kelleher? Of course, you guys are supposed to fight in uh, in November. Um, you know, wh What's the mentality heading into this fight, knowing you're fighting the same guy you're supposed to fight a month ago? Same thing as before, man. You know, prepare, you know. Mentally and physically, you know, go out there and look to do my best. That's about it. Was there any reluctance in taking this fight just with what happened last time? I know it's not something Brian could control, but were you, you know, looking at someone else as an opponent just in case, you know, Brian might still have some health issues? Oh, man. It's the fight game, man. Uh, at, after that, you know, yeah, of course, you know, we got to see what's out there, you know. I just put in a full, uh, a full training camp and didn't want, want that to go away. So, of course, yeah. Uh, I, I jumped right back out there. Was looking for another fight. And uh, how how did you find out he was off UFC 230? Oh, uh, they uh, they loaded us up to uh, head over to the venue, and um, like the bus is getting ready to pull off, and it just slowly came to like a slow stop. Like 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 we moved only like four or five feet, and the bus just stopped. And then um, uh, my coach Jake, his phone rang, and he just he got up. He was like, oh, I'm going to talk you off the bus. Come on, come on, everybody get off the bus. So we get off the bus, and, like, right there in front of, like, the hotel, he's like, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to tell you, fight's off. Uh, he got sick. Um, have you spoken to Brian since the fight was canceled? Like, did he reach out after, um, you know, the fight was, was uh, called off? No, man. Okay. So you have uh, I, if he did, I, I, I wouldn't know, man. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too real, real big on, like, social media and everything like that. So uh, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you. I imagine you wanted to get on this Milwaukee card, though, that's happening this weekend, because obviously that's a short drive for you. Uh, did you try and make a push for that? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, I was trying to get on the Milwaukee card like way before I even knew about the Kelleher fight. So um, uh, I knew, I knew like the UFC was coming to Milwaukee. Uh, a couple guys I knew and I trained with a couple of times around that car. So like I was excited and I was like, oh, like like this is my time. Like you know, like let's let's do it. Let's. Let's make that stamp, like, smack dab in, you know, my own hometown. So, like, of course I was trying to get in the car, but the car was already pretty pretty uh, filled, and no one, like, pulled out. No fights really got scrapped. So, like, there really, there, there really wasn't any options for me to even get on the car. Like, it, that was out of perspective to even ask at, at that point. So Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And it was, you know, hoping and wishing, you know. And and just last thing, uh, you know, sort of on the on the last scheduled fight, um, did you take any time off, or did you were you right back to training once the fight was called off? Um, like I, I wasn't pretty sure if I was going if, if something was going to fall through for someone else, so I I got like I got right back to it uh, right away. Okay, so you didn't yeah didn't didn't take much time off. Uh, so let's let's talk about the rescheduled matchup. You're facing Brian Kelleher. Um, you know, did you sort of have notes from the first training camp that you could kind of refer to? Like like how have you uh, sort of prepared yourself for this camp? Uh man, not not nothing not nothing really unusual for me, man. Um, I, I leave all that stuff to the coaches, man. I just I just I just you're on you're on you know, autopilot. I just fight. Yeah, you know, I I don't I don't put too much thought into like whatever whoever you know. I just I go out there and do my thing, man. And and we haven't talked since you had your UFC debut, and I know that fight didn't go your way against Ricky Simone. But what did you take away from that that short notice opportunity? And again, it was one of those fights where even though you lost, I think you you put on a good showing. Oh yeah, man. I, I was like six days off the couch, man. Like, like I, I learned, like you, you got, like everyone says like, oh, like, oh, I want the opportunity. I want this. I want that. But you got to be prepared for the opportunities, man. You you, you got to be prepared, man. Like, and that's one of the, like the valuable lessons I learned. Like I, I got to be prepared at all times. You know, you never know what's going to fall in your lap, man. You know, opportunity waits for no one. So like, like, like you damned if you do, you damned if you don't, like you don't want to shoot yourself or have that should have, could have, would have attitude. Like, Oh man, if I would have did this, or I, I should have did that, or I could have done this, like that shit's for the birds, man. Like that shit's so cliche. Like you gotta be ready for anything and everything. You gotta be ready, man, because you never know what opportunities gonna fall in your lap. Because this has been sort of an extend, extended training camp, like you didn't get much time off. Um, how how do you go about not overtraining? And you know, because sometimes that'll happen where you know you you have sort of a timeline of when you want to peak and everything like that. But when you get a fight, you know, rescheduled, uh, it's a little bit difficult to to you know uh, navigate through that. Um, I, I pretty much listen, listen to my body, man. Like, uh, if, if anything's, uh, 
starting to nag or any uh, muscle fatigue, you know, then I, you know, I take a day off, you know, or I take half a day off, uh, you know, do some uh, rejuvenating uh, therapies, you know, to myself and just try to reset and uh, get back to it, man, right away. And um, for training camp, uh, who have been some of your main training partners? Oh, uh, man. I, I, be honest with you, man. Like, I don't know, man. Wh whoever comes to the gym, man. Okay, so it's just a mix of everyone. I know even like Leah Letson trains with you guys, and, and obviously she's, uh, you know, in, um, she's a, basically, well, she's 45 or 35 or so, but she says she was training with you guys too, which is kind of cool. Yeah, hell, hell yeah, man. Um, you know, uh, at, at our gym, uh, no feelings will be spared, man. No, every, everyone's got to get in there. You got you to get in I was going to ask, uh, how's your training partner, Tim Hiley, doing? I, I know he had a pretty bad break in the gym. I think it was last week or week before. How's he doing? Uh, Tim, Tim is, he, he's in good spirits. You know, it's just, it just like, you know, like, he see everybody else, like, out doing their thing. And, you know, he's in a fucking wheelchair. Like, that sucks. That really sucks. Um, the... His, his his injury isn't that bad, you know, from from the research I saw and everything, like um, like dislocated ankle and like a uh, a broken fibula isn't that bad, you know. Uh, he he didn't have like any like he didn't tear any tendons or any ligaments or anything in his foot and his ankle, so he he should be back within like less than a month and a half, you know. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, how's your, how's the weight cut going? Oh man, wait wait wait, cuts easy, man. Um, no. Like, like, you know, just dialing in on the diet and stop eating them cheeseburgers, man, and eating them Sundays, you know. I'll be fine, you know. How, how do you get through Christmas? Do you just have to postpone it? Because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of holiday food and everything like that. Um, man, um, I'm, I'm leaving uh, Christmas Day, so I, I'm, 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 I'm going to miss all that. But, you know, like, it, it really ain't nothing, man, you know. It ain't really nothing for me, like, just to, you know, call my mom or, like, call my grandma or call like one of my uh, like my friends moms and stuff you know they, they make me something to eat like that's no problem man okay that's good to hear um how do you see this fight playing out on the on the 29th i don't know man i'm, I'm just gonna take whatever he's giving me you know no that that's that, that's what i could say man like i i like again like i, I want to know till i get in there you know yeah. So like, no, no, that, that that's sure. That that's true for sure. Um, I guess the main thing is getting the win, right? Because you obviously want to bounce back here and uh, you know keep, keep that great record you have going. Um, you know, because again, you 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 had a really uh, tough opportunity, like you said, six days out in your debut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, like if, if I'd have been like consistently training and like preparing enough for the opportunity, then, then like, it, like we wouldn't be, we we might we might not even be here. Like I'd be on a whole different, you know whole different path but you know everything happens for a reason you know so like that that taught me like you got to be ready like there really is no no time off no days off in this sport you know you gotta be ready to go because you know it's, it's always somebody out there that wants your job it's always somebody out there that wants your place it's like like you gotta remember you gotta put yourself in those shoes when before you before you even got here like you know i like, used that guy that was fighting you know fighting your heart out training your heart out you know because because oh, this, this is one of your dreams you know to make it to the ufc and be given this platform so like i i still I, like i just go back to thinking that same way go back to thinking like i'm that guy in them amateur days and you know like i'm i'm fighting to make my dreams come true you know like that that keeps me going right there you know does it add a little bit more being on this stack card at the end of the year and the fact that, you know, John Jones is on this card, like, like, does that make it a little bit more exciting of a matchup or, or is it just another fight for you? Uh, like to be honest with you, man, it do. It, it, it like, it really, it really, you know, like I, I add that pressure on myself. Like, like, like I remember, like, I, I remember like I was a kid, like, and I, like I was damn near in high school, and like John Jones is making noise, you know. He like when he fucking broke Brandon Vera's jaw like that, like that right there I was like, oh shit, okay, this dude's the real deal. Like John is on his way, and then when he beat Shogun, I'm like, oh shit, like if this dude can do it, like I know I can do it. I I know I can do it like 100, percent you know. So he he was a bit of an inspiration for you, I guess. Yeah, hell yeah! Like, like seeing like John Jones, like, like, like a young kid, like just come off and just like boom, just going to tear right away. That that was like, 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 
right there, that gave me like that took away all doubts. Like, oh, you can do this. You, you can really be whatever you you want to be. You know, like you you can control and make your own destiny. But like, what what really like made me like fall in love with the sport of MMA is like like watching like Anderson Silva, man. Anderson Silva was like, and it's that like that that right there is that. You know how like people talk about like like Michael Jordan, and then like people talk about like LeBron James. Like for like for my generation of watching MMA, like Anderson Silva, like that's my Michael Jordan. Like no one's better than the goat. Like I, I don't care what you say. Like no, no one's better than than, than the goat. And then you look at like like the current people that say like John Jones or GSP. You know that's that's their Michael Jordan. You know and and I, I can't do nothing but respect that because they they never say that. They never say like their 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 goat is better than any other goat. So like you know. I take it all with them proud, but like Anderson Silva was the man. You know, when he beat when he beat Chris Lieben, he knocked out Chris Lieben. Oh my God. I remember that. Made that was look a scary e- fight. Because Lieben had never been finished like that before. Man, he, he made it he made it look so easy, man. And then and then like when he he, he knocked out Victor Berford with that, that front kick. Crazy, man. Crazy. Last uh, question before we let you go here. Uh, I know you're not a big social media guy, but obviously your name is very similar to a uh, famous uh, R&B uh, guy back in the 90s, uh, Montel Jordan. Uh, any thoughts of ever coming up to This Is How We Do It uh, in your entrance? Uh, this is how... Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think you know, should, man. man. The, the connection's there. Anytime you fight, I always see people make the references. Yeah, yeah, but my, my name is spelled M-O-N-T-E-L. That's true, my name but it still so- sounds it still sounds similar, right? Yeah, but I, I don't know, man. Like that, like, like I don't want to like like poacher and encroach on like that dude's style. Like that's that's dude's style. That's, that's his stuff, you know. Like all Montels aren't the same, you know. Like, like no, I, of course, I, of course. I just I just figured it'd be kind of like a funny joke, right? Because like you have the similar name, so I don't know. But uh, no, no, man. That's that. That you, ain't you even. You can't my- mess with this. Is how we do it. Is what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, man, you you can't do that. Like, even though my name Montel, man, I I, I wouldn't even want to do that to him, you know. Okay, fair uh, enough. Pay yeah. homage, homage to the man. I like that. Um, this is gonna be an awesome card. It's coming up here December 29th. It is UFC 232. Montel, it was uh, great getting a chance to talk to you, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. Even though I know you're not on it that much, and uh, if you got any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I want to thank the UFC. Uh, thank Dana White, Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard. Thank Jason House, Iridium. Thank Jacob. Uh, thank Ed. You know, Ed be setting up a lot of these interviews, you know. Um, thank my team, you know, Pira Vida. Shout out to Zach. He's fighting this Saturday on a Milwaukee card. Um, shout out Leah. She just won her fight. Goodwill. I want to, like, send a shout out to Tim. Tell him to get well. Shout out Alton. He just had a big fight and he Huge won this win. fight. Yeah, against Eric Murray. That was a good win. Yeah, man. That, I, I, man. Alton's a man, big country motherfucker, man. And now he's part of Team Iridium too. You guys are under the same management. Yeah, man. I don't know why would Eric Murray lay on the ground and let Alton hit him. Like, that's crazy. That that's just bad business, man. Like his man, his health insurance premium probably gonna go through the fucking roof.